know that a custom-made demo of SimCity 2000 is exhibited in the New York Museum of Modern Art. You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the xboxhub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, and welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode 117. My name's Gareth Bryden, I'm going to be your host, and on my virtual left is Mr. James Burks. How are you doing, James? Hello, I'm Mr. Burks, thank you. Good. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Mm. <laughs> Again, I sound too hyper, so I'm not at, at the age of a breakdown, which is which is pretty true this week. I'm on a very busy time at the moment. Um, on my virtual right is Mr. Richard Dobson. How are you doing? Not Richard Dobson. This is where our problem is. It's Paul Renshaw, who's standing in for Richard Dobson. Excellent. You couldn't get Richard. <laughs> you couldn't get Richard. Yeah. I mean, there's you've no idea how insulting it is to a bloke from Lancashire to be called the name of a man from Yorkshire. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's absolutely <laughs> dreadful behaviour. Do you know what I did, Paul? Um, I was speaking to Richard on Twitter about um, Cyberpunk, and he's having a great time. And I said, I told you. That's what happened about a minute ago, so that's what's confused me. Paul Renshaw, uh, of course, the one and only Paul Renshaw, here, <laughs> now, the amazing Paul Renshaw. How are you doing, Paul? You had a good week? Uh, yeah, not too bad. You know, I've okay, been great. playing out and uh, stuff but good, we're here apart about that. from that All everything's right. good um, and my virtual opposite is Mr William Kawana how you doing William? Good it's always great to be here with you guys especially oh. here with Richard it's always nice <laughs> <laughs> it's Listen, nice. you can really go off these Americans <laughs> <laughs> oh, right um, as we always say I always like to say William's from Canada uh, we're all just we're just not, we're not we're in um, Toronto. Paul, where are you from at this point? Uh, currently, I'm in Nottingham, but I'm a proud, well, sort of proud um, town of origin was Oldham in oh, Greater okay. Manchester. And James is in Morecambe. Morecambe, yeah. Where you film TV show in the Bay? That's right. On ITV. That's people get killed all the time. <laughs> there <laughs> there <is> <laughs> Fairly accurate, then, yeah. <laughs> um, let's go around, James. What have you been doing this week? What fun stuff have you been up to? Fun. Well, I mean, it's tricky to define what fun it is, but I've been watching a lot of Cuphead on Netflix. Oh. The Cuphead show adapted from the hit game Cuphead, um, <laughs> which I've never played, so I have no idea what's going on. But luckily, it doesn't make a difference. It's still a nice little. Underrated show featuring Cuphead and Mugman and the uh, trouble they get themselves in. Um, and it, it's actually really good because the old school like artwork, you know, the art style, it it's really nostalgic for me. It reminds me of, like Tom and Jerry and and even a bit of Mickey Mouse back in the day. Um, but they do a really good job in the characters. Every character you meet is really memorable. Like the, I think the bosses in the actual game, like King Dice, is he in the yep. game? He is. Yeah, and R- Ribby and Croaks. Yep. They're, they're all really memorable, and every episode's about 15 minutes, and it's quite self-contained. You can find yourself watching just a few in a row without even blinking. Um, it's quite funny, light-hearted, and I think kids will enjoy it as well. Um, yeah, it's interesting you say that. Um, my son's a massive fan of Cuphead. He's finished it and everything. He's he's better at games than I am. Um, mm. And I, I didn't even know that this existed, so I'll make sure he's aware of it, because mm. it sounds like it sounds right up his alley. Yeah, the 12 episodes, and I think it came on Netflix last Friday. Mm-hmm. It's still quite new. Excellent. Yeah, it's, it's good. Thumbs up well, thanks, from James. Thanks, James. Yeah, yeah, there's public service broadcasting there. What I liked about that, James, is that how you went, it made me nostalgic. And I thought, were you born in the 1920s? <laughs> I mean, I know I sound quite young, but I am 
I'm, I'm very much a veteran of this world. <laughs> like a vampire. Goodness. Yeah. Um, good. um, it's funny though, I was thinking about this the other day, when I, my generation, and maybe Paul's, he's a couple of years younger than me, um, yeah. TV was much different and you you were just, things on TV, you were just watching them. They put a lot of 1920s silent movies on, like at 5.30 on BBC Two. So <laughs> you had no idea of time sometimes. And you, of course, watched a lot of old Tom and Jerry cartoons. So you had no idea yeah. of like, and, and Disney films would get re-released at the cinema. So Bambi would come out in 77. And again, it was like after a 20-year gap. And you thought, actually, that had been made last year. You had no concept of that. You know, so yeah, it was, it's interesting you said that because Tom, it's, you know, it's, it's a long thing. Like Lauren Hardy, I I thought I, that's why I watched a lot of when I was sort of like in mm. ten or nine. Um, good, William. What about you? Did you have a good? What have you been doing this week? Uh it's my week off actually, mm. so that's been pretty good. Uh, I'll discuss a bit more what I've done for the vast majority of that in our next topic of discussion but i will say that i saw a uh, dog with channing tatum which was a good movie and the uncharted movie which i was not too keen on and yeah what was the uncharted not so you weren't so keen on that yeah i was uh it, it was just incredibly miscast right. uh i mean tom holland was okay uh the girl they have playing Chloe, she's quite good. But Mike Wahlberg is Sully, man. He's just... <laughs> he's not Sully. He's not the character from the game. He's not the team dad we all love. He's just Mike Wahlberg and, like, Henley. And they're going, hey, that's Sully. I'm like, that's not Sully. That's Mike Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> Who would have been a good Sully, do you think? Have you got one in your head? Uh Michael Douglas, maybe? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, it's interesting, isn't it? It's just one of those films. I think we, me, I think me and James have definitely said this. We just said, do you see by the trailer? It's just something you think, look at it and go, it's a sort of medium 60% film, three stars out of five. It yeah. looks like. <laughs> Was it that, William? <laughs> it's kind of okay. Uh, if you are able to divorce it from the games, yes. Yeah, okay. I think... But I think the problem with this is it borrows liberally from the games, but doesn't do anything as good or even better than them. So you just send back on, oh, well, I saw that in Uncharted 3, and it was done a heck of a lot better there <laughs> through a lot of this. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, Paul, you've watched something this week, haven't you? I have watched something. It's quite unusual for me. Yeah. Um, that's like two weeks in a row I've watched something. Um, yeah, I watched... Um, for the first time ever, I've watched a Guy Ritchie film. Um, I've managed to go 48 years without watching one so far. <laughs> I think I am the only man in the entire world who's not seen Lockstock. Um, but yeah, it's um, it was on it was on one of the streaming platforms. I think it was Amazon Prime. I think it is Amazon. Um, yeah, called Wrath of Man, and it's got Jason Statham in it. So, you know, I, th I immediately thought, brilliant, what we need is a bald man punching people. Um, but it's actually really well done. I really enjoyed it. The story is very good. Obviously, I'll not go into it here, but there's twists and turns and, you know, it's double crosses and this, that and the other. And I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So I can recommend it to yeah. people okay. as long as they're OK with swearing, because there's quite a lot of it. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Is Jason Stratham doing an American accent? Uh, no, oh. he's being British, Good. Um, okay. which is handy because he is. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen it, William? Yep, loved it. Ah, oh, there you it. go. Two recommendations. Oh, fantastic! Great. I'm Rath glad it's not just me. Good, Wrath of Man. Recommendation from Paul and William. Um, I'm just going to mention two things really quickly. I've seen. Um, this is an old film. Well, as I say, old in the last four months, five months. So, Free Guy. Um, if you any of you get to watch that, that's a bit of fun. Has anyone seen it? It's really good because it's about games. Anyone I wanted it? to watch it's it. I've, fun, I've, it. I've been interested to see what you think about it, Gareth, because it doesn't strike me as your kind of thing. It's it, not awfully highbrow. It's fun. It's really good fun. Um, I just think it's a great thing about you know it, it follows this NPC in this game world um, who suddenly becomes more aware of what's going on. 
and doesn't follow his kind of loops or his rules and and then it goes from there but it's a really it's a really lovely kind of like just for gamers about how things work the kind of world um, what's going on in the background the, the world they're in this place called free city is almost like a sort of grand theft auto e type just people going around doing stuff uh, or you know a big shooter um and it's it's fun ryan reynolds is always great um and he's having a great time in this yeah i i thought it was great i thought it was really good fun and um, i really recommend watching it william have you seen it i have it was a lot of fun it's a lot of fun isn't it and it has a really nice and nice gaming kind of like little references and stuff i really enjoy it but another thing i've seen this week um is um on apple tv it's a thing called severance and it's um, a sort of new TV series. And the idea behind it, that kind of thing, and it's directed by Ben Stiller. It has a, um, an actor I've forgotten the name of who's in Parks and Recs and loads of stuff. He's an actor. Oh, no. Thank you very much, James. And he, and there's also, oh, I've forgotten the name. Um, and, and basically the idea is that they work in this, for this kind of like, um, almost like a government organisation. I'm not too sure yet. But it's a thing called severance. So you basically, they do something to your mind. And when you go into work, you have no idea. You, have nothing, you don't know anything about your, your, your normal life in the day. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, so, and then when you're at work, so you don't know if you're, you're about your family or anything else. And the moment you leave the building, you're back to your person with his family life and history and who they are. But you don't remember anything about what you do at work. There's this thing called severance that they voluntarily do before the thing. And that's the concept. And, of course, things start to go a little bit wrong. But, yeah, that's, it's great. I've only watched a couple of episodes. really like it. It's, um, visually, it's fantastic. It just, the design of it looks great, and the performances are really good. Um, yeah, it's worth a, worth a watch. There we go. Um, should we go into games we've been playing? Yeah, why not? I'm going to start with William because... There's a game I think we've both been playing this week, which was the big release last Friday, wasn't it? Uh, William, what have you been playing? Uh, so I have played and I have uh, beaten uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Wow. You've done it. You finished it. I did. As I said, I had a week off, so <laughs> that <laughs> that gives you a lot of time to jump in. <laughs> um, your th- Your thoughts... Let's have your thoughts for him without spoiling anything. Because remember, I'm still stuck in a bar really early on, just wandering around. Um, oh no! <laughs> uh, what's your thoughts? Do you enjoy it? I loved it. I'm loving it so far, but I, I, I can be persuaded. I think I think this is very good. I think this is a very good game. Uh, I think it's enjoyable. There are some flaws. There are some parts that are kind of a step back from the first here, but I think first game here. But I think what's here is very good. Uh, the only thing I will say is I was kind of hoping this would be an Uncharted 2 type situation where the st- where the series really finds its identity and blows me away. I don't think this is it, but I think that this is still a darn good game and it looks amazing. Yeah. Just such a big, um, luscious looking world that you want to explore. It's, it's a gorgeous game. Yeah. It's pretty one. I mean, the, I think one of the biggest things is the facial animation is amazing. Um, yeah, my my part- significant step up. Yeah, there from amazing. First. My partner Bernadette, she comes in all the time and she doesn't really like games, but she comes in all the time and goes, "I know that actor." That's all she says every time I play in it. I know that who's that actor. But it's so clear the faces, you know, and just the performances. It's, yeah, it's just very good. I think yeah, I think visually it's a it's a treat, especially I probably I mean on PlayStation Four it looks good apparently, but I think. It's a kind of a moment that you're kind of going to the draw distance and the, you go into a valley quite early on in the game and you're seeing the kind of mountains. But, you know, you just, it's just every now and again, it's really nice just to turn the camera up and then you're just seeing this amazing kind of like vista all the time as well as a close-up of the face. It's just, yeah, it's really... But you, do you think, what do you think of the story, first of all, without spoiling anything? Uh, that That's interesting. I think... Having completed the story, I f- I wasn't too keen on this one this time around. I think the tribal stuff and the uh, the sci-fi stuff doesn't quite mesh as well this time. I think the villains and their motiv- 
sections are about as thin as a sheet of rice paper. Mm. That said, I think where Horizon has traditionally excelled, and this is a, the same case here, is in the characters. So there are tons of great moments, especially on the base. You get to meet some new characters in this who I think are just as good as the ones from the prior game. Uh, you know, and you get old friends back, you get Varl, you get Eren. They're a lot of fun in this. They've got some really great moments. And so I, I think the strength of this series is still in the character writing. I mean, it's a it's a very there was a funny moment when I started at the beginning for James and Paul and it, it's a bit of you just, you go around you have this option to go around and talk to your friends obviously from the first game and I was literally going to talk to them going I can't remember any of you it's like been at a party <laughs> parties I go to I can't remember people's names it was like that okay, who are you what's oh yeah you like me yeah okay you know me that's good <laughs> I did something good <laughs> no idea can't remember any of it. um. But yeah, I think I, I can't blame you. It's been it's, it's a long been time, half a decade yeah. since the last one. Yeah. So it's a it's a. It, I think the kind of I do feel why you like about it at the moment. I'm quite early on. Is this real idea of just going on this quest? You know, sense of an RPG, which everyone has of going on a quest. You go on this sort of journey, but it does feel this kind of like it's the world just feels very filled out, doesn't it? In kind of texture and kind of like landscape, but it rather than I'm playing and. Another RPG I'm not going to talk about because I can't yet, which is very much like those old kind of like sort of very flat world and very predictable. So it's interesting um, sort of meeting too. Um, but yeah, it's a, oh God, how long did it take you to do, William? Uh, Nineteen hours. Oh, that's good. So you, did you directly so story it? Did you did you did you, or did you do? Did you say nineteen? Yeah, nineteen. Wow. Yep. So that that was the full story, and that was like eight side quests, something like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well done. Good. Um, James, Paul, any any questions from new PlayStation fans? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. No. <laughs> Good. James. I do. Um, yeah. No. There you go. Um, not, that's fair enough. Um, thank you, William. Oh, really? We covered it. Yeah. Fair. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's such a good job. It's good. It's really good. It's really worth getting. I think, I think William's probably right. But I think is it worth doing. getting a PlayStation Five for though? That's the question. Is it a system seller? Oh, silence. Mm. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. I think. Yes and no. I mean, it's it's an undeniably great uh, presentation of the power of the system. And, of course, it's important to mention, first of all, that this is a cross-gen game. So if you have a PS4, you can play it on your PS4. But mm-hmm. I think, as well, I, I really struggle to buy into the idea that one game sells a system unless it's, like, this amazing must-play you be dumb not to buy a system type game and really mm-hmm. I the only ones I think might be that are like God of War and Elder Scrolls respectively so I, I don't know I mean, they, but I definitely think it's worth buying a PS5 if you have enough interest in this and God of War and Spider-Man and all of them so I mean you get with the PS5 you get the you because you have to do the online subscription thing you you get the the first game for free, God of War for free, is part of the PS collection. So yeah. it's worth it for that. So you can okay. see that. Um, good. Okay. Um, Paul, what have you been yeah. playing? What have I been playing? Well, we'll kick off with the big one. Um, I've been playing King of Fighters 15. <laughs> so, you know, you can forget your Tekken 7s and your Gears 5. It's <laughs> King of Fighters 15. And... It's been it's been interesting, shall we say. Um, it's a very good-looking game. Um, the sprites are big and bold and full of personality, and the fighting action is fantastic. Um, the only thing I struggled with was some of the inputs for the moves are quite hard to do on a uh, on a pad. 
Um, so like the super duper special moves is like a quarter circle back and then a half circle forwards. And it's really quite difficult to pull off on a D-pad. Um, but other than that, I've really enjoyed it. It's been very good indeed. I don't know the King of the Fighters franchise at all. Is it? Was it what, on... none of the fifteen of them? No. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it an Xbox thing? Where did they start? Uh, they started way back in the arcade, believe it or not. Oh, okay. It was kind yeah. of, a, as, as far as I know, it was a mashup between sort of Fatal Fury and something else. Um, and then it turned into King of Fighters. And then they've just got more and more characters and more and more fighting as you go on. And now there's, you know, I think there's 42 characters to choose. And the thing that's different about it, instead of it being one on one, you choose three three characters to be right. so that you have like tag teams of three uh, um and yeah it was uh, very enjoyable so yeah th- th- there's official teams you can pick from or you can uh, have um other you know you can just have um things where they um you can pick whoever you fancy hmm. and yeah it's all it's all groovy Good, you like that. James, you, have you played this game, this franchise? I think I have done it at some point, but it, it's not very memorable to me. <laughs> it can't have been that good. Slammed. Slammed. Oh. Yeah, it is uh, Injustice. Ah. Or Mad vs. Capcom. Or yeah. mm-hmm. See, it's the, it's the different beast, though, isn't it? Because this is a proper old school... It's it's like it's more like Street Fighter than any other games that yeah. you've just mentioned. Um, yeah, they get a bit more simplistic, aren't they, the newer ones? Yeah, they're... It's, yeah, they're... Um, I mean, to me, it was, it's was. it been a very good fighting game. I do like a fighting game. Um, mm-hmm. And this has been pretty awesome. So, okay. yeah, I, uh, I recommend it to fighting game fans out there. Just if you're going to go and play online, make sure you've got your big boy pants on because they are absolutely brutal. <laughs> I got absolutely destroyed by all the people. So. Yeah, good. But that might just yeah, be my lack question. of. Hmm. You can. Who's your favourite character? Who's my favourite character? Yeah, um, probably. Who are you mastering? I'm trying to master. Well, because it's a team. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to master. I think he's called Terry, and there's one oh, called Andy. Hey, well Terry, Terry, Andy, and Joe, and Joe. are one team. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fatal Fury. And they're yeah. yeah, they're all from Fatal Fury, and they they yeah. carry they they're like Ken and Ryu basically. Mm. Um, and yeah, they're the ones that uh, I'm using currently. So hold on, so, they're, hold on. They're called Terry, Andy. It's like a they're like a local pub quiz team. Yeah, Terry, yeah, Andy, and Joe. Joe. Terry, Andy, and Joe. They've come from the dog and duck. Yeah, um, ter- Terry does entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Joe does sport. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Wow. And uh, Andy does kicking people in the face. <laughs> Good. Right, Terry, Andy, and Joe. We won't talk about that anymore. <laughs> um, James, what have you been playing? You've been playing loads at the moment, you. Right, that's a really good question. Because I'm playing a game that I can't talk about. So, um, I think it's another game. Okay, good. And then, if you keep me on the curtain, I've got to tell them already done it before. <laughs> so, I've got another one. Good. Are you ready, guys? Yeah. It's Ring of Pain. Mm. Oh. Have you heard of it? No, of course not. It's no. one of yours. Good, so I can make it up. <laughs> right, um, no. It's, um... It's a roguelike um, dungeon crawler, um, and basically it's, it's quite a dark, gritty dungeon crawler. And you have like a ring of cards, and you interact with the cards, like, it's tricky to explain. And the cards represent either creatures or uh, chests or potions, and you choose which one to pick. And you have to defeat all the cards or remove all the cards to progress to the next dungeon. Um, and it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, and you will die quite a lot. Because if you attack a creature in the first dungeon, there's a good chance they'll explode after you kill them. And you could be dead within the first minute 
Um, so it's very much a, a learning curve style roguelike. Um, but yeah, it's... I don't know if it's one of the better roguelikes I've played. It's in the middle somewhere. It's on Game Pass. So I'd say it's worth a look. But it is basically about finding items, improving yourself, and not taking too many risks until you get some decent armour. Um, yeah, it's very weird. Mm. Very bizarre. William, Sounds uh, absolutely dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> William, do you fancy that game? Not, not my type of game, I fancy that, but... but uh, <laughs> Well, at, least I've, at least I've steered you away from it. Yes. I've saved you from it. Yeah, you have. But the, th- the reason it's called Ring of Pain, so you've got a ring of cards, I assume they're like really sharp yes. and you get paper cuts and stuff, is that, you definitely is that get why it's called Ring of Pain? Right. Ah. Yeah, I mean, paper cuts are your least you worries. Um, really? It's all wow. very creepy. Um, you've got rats and weird creatures that are beyond explanation. Um, but yeah, good. I'm playing mm. that. I mean, my other choice was Solitaire Collection. So, uh, <laughs> that was the best choice. <laughs> can you get a PlayStation? Can you get anything else? Another console? Can you get, get got, your ZX Spectrum out? I've got a PlayStation. Okay. Oh, you have not you? <laughs> I've got a Switch. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, the game I've been playing, and it comes out today, because you're listening to this on Thursday, after 2 o'clock, I hope, because that's when the embargo is. Um, <laughs> is Martha is Dead. And Martha is Dead is from um, a studio that I can't remember the name of. I think it's Wired Productions, a publisher, and it's by the developer who did a, a, a Italian developer called a game called The Town of Light, which I think I might have reviewed for us oh, yeah. um, back in the day. And this has caused a little bit of a controversy already, which is PlayStation basically have censored the game. Um, mm. There's a couple of sections in there, so they've censored it. So that's delayed the physical version of the of the game um, coming out. Um, but Xbox and PC are doing the full uncensored version. So that there's been a lot of debate and a lot of kind of stuff. Which you know, I don't think it's going to do the game any harm because I think people will be going, "What's the horrible thing it does?" Um, and maybe we'll yeah. maybe we'll have a go at buying it. But it's. It's kind of much more than that, really. It's it's. Uh, I, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was brilliant. It's it's like a dark psychological horror thriller. Maybe it's in the first person, and it it's what's interesting is it's set in Italy in uh, nineteen forty four, and it's sort of like the backdrops of Second World War. You're basically you play uh, a, a pe- uh, one pair of twins and and Gloria and you your twin Martha. Um, at the start of the game, she is she dies. She's being murdered and is floating in the lake. I know. And then you're basically trying to find out how she's being killed and the effects it has on your family in this kind of Tuscan villa you live in with your German dad and your Italian mother. And uh, but what it does do it it bleeds um, the kind of realistic world into kind of fairy tale world as well. This is kind of ghost story about. Someone called the White Lady, who's this woman who was um, killed by her lover on this island on the lake that you live, and um, she basically always gets what young women, as the story goes, and drags them into the lake in certain times of the year. So that kind of ghost story is there, and the game is interestingly is is default is the Italian language, so you're it's it's spoken by Italian actors and has English subtitles. So it does, <laughs> it's put some people off, but it does feel like you're watching a kind of very interesting kind of art house piece of cinema at some times. And that, it, it, something really appealed to me about that. And it, 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 the narrative and the writing is fantastic, kind of framing the lighting. The visuals are just brilliant. It's really kind of clever. It just looks amazing. The interior details are kind of like when they go more fancy, in the more kind of fancy land, they're kind of the imagination of things. At one point, you're sort of recreating a puppet show like one of those little kids puppet shows you know with the sort of waves that are in 2d that move and you know to try to create some of the story um and at the same time you've got this realistic backdrop of the of kind of world war ii and what's happened in italy at that time and the sort of italian 
resistance who get kind of involved in the story at some point. But the story never puts you on the the thing that makes it kind of a psychological horror is your you've got the kind of ghost elements, but you'll you'll forever feel like something. You're forever you're the, the hairs on the back of your hands are always up. You feel you feel uncomfortable, and there are a few moments in it that you do certain things. That is where the sense has happened, and it is horrific, and it's unlike anything you've ever done before in a game. But it isn't. It's a hard one. This I think it's. I think it's needed for the for the for the game. I think it's there, it's there for a reason, and it's a couple of moments, and that that they make. If it was happening all the time, like you might play a game like I don't know, maybe the new Scorn game in we don't know in, in November, which is kind of in that horror kind of world, where things are happening, there's bodies everywhere all the time. This isn't like this. Is a couple of moments that really just shock you, and I think it's done on purpose. And it's um, but it is what you do is. And you're part of it. And you're having to do it. Is is horrific, and that might put people off. That might entice them into the game. Um, but I really, I thought it was great. I thought it was a fantastic game. I think I've given it a four and a half out of five. I thought it's a really clever bit of game making, storytelling, and visually it looks brilliant. Martha is dead. Any questions? Does the um, censorship on the well, because yeah, because that's basically what it is, isn't it? Does the censorship on the PlayStation? Do you think it would make it a worse game? That's a really good question. I think because the moments I think they're censoring are so um, they're not a huge part of the game. I mean, they're probably a, a sort of three minute section and a four mm-hmm. minute section, um, maybe less of that, you know. And, and strangely, towards the end of the game, they warn you about, you're towards the end, you get warned, the next bit is going to be a bit hard. Um, do you want a sense of this? So you, they give you a sensor in the game. But actually, the, okay. two, the two biggest things have already happened. You're like, what, what's going to happen now? And it isn't as bad. It's just a, a description of what's something. So it's, yeah, I, I, I think it's important. You know, like if you have a really good, really brilliantly done horror thing and there's a few mo- horror film or something there's a few moments they do i think it's i think they can justify it i really do um mm-hmm. but it will i think it will upset people as well um okay. without saying what it is yeah but i don't think your experience you i don't think you would miss it maybe if you you wouldn't know you wouldn't go oh my god where's the horror bit mm-hmm yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Good. There Thank we go. You. Martha is dead. Um, have we got other games? Um, William, have you got another game to share about? Uh, no, not really. I mean, no, I good. put 19 hours into Ryzen, oh, so... We can't judge you on yeah. that. You've been busy. Yeah. Um, James, you haven't got another one, have you? Unless you're, I think you're right. Unless you're right, you're right, right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing one now, hang on. Yeah. Uh, and Paul's got another one of you, Paul. You've been playing another big franchise. Game. I have been playing another big franchise, yeah. Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires I've been playing. Um, now, I'm not a massive... I'm not massively invested in the Dynasty Warriors um, sort of franchise, if you like. Um, but I've always enjoyed the charging about one person against a thousand on the battlefield and everything else. Yeah and battering everybody. Um, The thing with this is that you've got that, you've got the fighting, you know, on the massive scale, as always, but they've tacked something else on, um, which is like a, almost like a politician simulator, if you like. So you have meetings every six months with your leader, and he gives you certain tasks that you have to perform. And then you have to go off and perform these tasks, whether it be recruiting other officers or just chatting to people or whatever. And this this half of the game is it's really slow and really tedious. And it looks bad. The the weird thing is there's a real difference between the the graphics in the battle scene, which is flashy and fast and, you know, really good. And then the bit where you're wandering around the town talking to somebody looks like an Xbox 360 game. It's very peculiar. 
Um, and to be honest, it just it sort of kills the game for me almost. So I love the running about and fighting. That's great. That's uh, as always. But the the other half where you have to, you know, perform all these tasks and, you know, some of the tasks are really boring, like get more food or raise more gold from this particular province or whatever it may be. So all you do is you go into a menu, press a button and it says, yeah, well done. You've done that. And that's it. You know, there's Mm -hmm. nothing there's no sense of achievement with it. Um, not like there is when you rush out and capture a castle or whatever. So, mm. yeah, it's 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 a bit of an odd one. I've not actually written the review yet, so I've not decided on a mark. But, you know, it's it's definitely going to be a case of this 50% of the game is great and this 50% of the game is not so great. Yeah. Well, write in if you want to give Paul a yeah, hint of your mark. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to uh, give me some clues or, you know, if you want to write the review for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Answers on a postcard to uh, Bang Bang Briley. Yeah. Bang Bang Briley. Is that my name? I like <laughs> That's it. That's your That's new name. Yeah. name. <laughs> bang Bang Briley. Yeah. I like it. Um, <laughs> Finally, um, I'm just going to talk really briefly about it because it's just worth it. Is I played um, Far Lone Sales as a game that came out maybe five years ago. A little indie game. You're about this little person who goes across this kind of apocalyptic wilderness in this kind of ship put together like an ark, and it's about your sort of journey. It's all visual storytelling. And there's a sequel that's coming to Game Pass on March the first. Um, and I've just written a review of it. I had a chance to play it and it's called far changing tides it's in the same universe so it's the same world but it's a kind of different story but it's the same thing but this time the boy i can't say too much about it the the boy kind of has the vehicle and it's it's much more water covered world it's a desert world before and um it has the same principles um it does a few new surprises um but i think everyone's gonna have a lot of fun for it read my review you'll get an idea of it there um it's again brilliantly visual storytelling in the, in the same sense of journey or inside that kind of feeling to it. These you're seeing this kind of world in the background and you're trying to guess what's happened there. But it's just a great kind of adventure and and some puzzles to work out. Yeah, it's really good. Coming out March the first. Game Pass people get it free. Worth having a go. Excellent. Okay, let's have a look at some news. Um, William, I'm going to go to you first of all. And you two shut your ears. But, you know, you could comment about this. The new PlayStation VR headset, VR2, has been revealed. Um, the picture of it and its little weird controllers. Um, William, have you, did you, have you got virtual reality, the, the first one? Are you interested in that at all? Uh, I do not have it, no. no. Uh, it's not as if it isn't of interest per se. It's it's certainly neat. It's just really expensive, like five hundred bucks. Right. Okay. Um, but would you be interested in this one? Does this one make you go, "Ooh, now's the time to get into the VR world"? If the price was right, and I think if it works on the PC, that would be pretty great. Uh, I don't think it will. Probably. I mean. The hope would obviously be something that you could use on both your PS5 and your PC Mm -hmm. and uh, take in all of the stuff that VR has to offer. But it it is a neat looking thing. It kind of looks like the front of a chef's uniform a bit. eh? (laughs) It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. (laughs) (laughs) It does. I think that's what they were going for. It's got eye tracking now, which is a new thing, isn't it? Um, It's... um, got OLED sensors of course it's got it's much more the what you're seeing is much more um visually interesting I mean if it can run if you could ever get that Half-Life game on there would that ever happen do you think or would that just be always on Steam Half-Life Alex or Ajax <laughs> what's it called uh, uh, Alex Alex yeah, yeah. If that could go on the PS VR that... It wouldn't shock me. I don't think Valve cares too much about exclusives per se. They they always used to point their stuff to the console. Mm. Uh, Counter Strike, Half Life, Portal, all that. So I could see it. And they've got the Horizon game. Is there, I think going to be the one they re- release with, aren't they? And is a little Horizon in the Horizon universe um, that your looks like it might be coming out when it comes out. That's their big. 
Big. Now, Paul and, Paul and James, are you curious about VR? I've always been curious. Mm, no, I'm not. I, I wonder if this, if this fad of VR and stuff is going to be like the 3D tellies that everybody had to have. You know, oh, then, don't not 3D tellies. 3D <laughs> well, is the future. 3D is not the future. 3D is the past, isn't it? Um, so I, I'm still not convinced that VR is the future, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I, 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 I remain to be convinced. Let's put it that way. It's, I, I know what you mean. I mean, but I, I've got people, I've got friends who are PC owners and got all the kits and all the best things in play, and they just find it amazing. And we've got mm-hmm. friends, I mean, with the PlayStation as well. It's interesting that the PlayStation are carrying on. They're really committed to it. And I think we've got friends as well who are on PlayStation who love, you know, Richard. Well, I think he's a big uh, VR person. He loves it. He speaks. Richard. Yeah, yeah but he lives, he lives in Leeds, so any kind of escape from that reality is fine. But that's, I can see why you'd embrace that. I'd like to apologise to all the people in Leeds. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it might get, I might get interested. I'm curious about it. It's just whether it's going to make me feel sick or not, which it has done before when I've played, and that's my greatest drawback. Making me feel ill mm. at home is not the thing I want to do. But mm. we'll see. Exactly. Um, Call of Duty um, is going to take a year off. Not for this year, but I think we're going to get the new one, but for t- 2023 version, it's going to get delayed for 2024. Um, I think this is a good thing, don't you? Now as games get, you know, do you think it's a good to have a year, a break from that year? William, I'm going to ask you. I, I don't think this is a good thing. I oh. think this is a great thing. Oh, I, think this is oh, I see thing. what you did there. Yep. <laughs> because let's put it this way. It's it's unsustainable getting these games out year after year after year, especially in the modern day uh, development environment. And that is meant, for example, that Beanox, uh, Vicarious Visions, well, less of them, uh, Toys for Bob, uh, High Moon Studios, Raven, all of these great, immensely talented teams under Activision have been forced on Call of Duty. Like, these are guys who have made some of the best games out there. They made Bloody Hexen. They made Singularity. They made the Transformers War for Cybertron series. And uh, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. And they were working on Call of Duty and keeping that series supported and I think especially now that Microsoft's coming in and buying these guys it'll be exciting to see these guys make games again you know and I think absence makes the hope grow fonder as well we can have better Call of Duty games we can ensure that each future release has both a campaign and a multiplayer that are both just excellent and I think it's what the industry needs I think this is a disruption that has been a long time coming mm. and it's, it's great. Yeah. Like this is the first time in, in 18 years that there won't be a call of duty every year. And that's not a bad thing. No. So yeah, I'm totally in favor of this. I think it worked when Assassin's Creed, cause that was yearly. Mm. People forget. And then, it's now gone yes. to a two yearly cycle, maybe a three year cycle. I mean, it looks like they're going to maybe have a uh, a game that was going to be an add on to Valhalla that's going to come as a standalone this year. But you know, maybe it's another before the new. What's it called? The new Assassin's Creed one, Unity or not Unity? Um, forever Infinity. Infinity. Yeah, yeah. Forever. That would have been a bad name for it. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, um, James, I'm going to just put this to you. Do you think other franchises could take a a, a lesson from this? Um, I mean, like you said, it definitely worked for Assassins. It's a nice way to refresh. And even the WWE game took a, a year off to try and give itself a bit of time to be better. It's good for the year of releases to sometimes just go, yeah, just give it a break for now. Mm. Um. But, I mean, half of me thinks that it would be good to see FIFA take a bit more time. Mm-hmm. But because of the way that you need to have up-to-date players in that, to understand why it's yearly. Yeah, but they would have that would be easy I mean, for them to do, wouldn't it? It would be easy for them to did. just update the players. It's just about them well, making they, more. They more. tried that, and 
Yeah, it's still great to get it in time. So, uh, it's but, not always easy. No, I think it's just money for the FIFA, isn't it? Yeah. It's just not like everyone's going to yeah. buy it. But, but yeah, I think it does have not. Games. Or not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good. Well, we'll pull you. Think it's a good idea, even though you don't play Call of Duty. Um, I don't play Call of Duty as much anymore, or at all, in fact. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be one of the most stressful environments to work in, surely, for the developers when you know that you've got to get this game out in a year, you know, and then you get all of the the cramming and the everything else that they have to do to try and make it work. So, I mean, if they can take some pressure off, I would imagine that they'll get a better result, a better product at the end of it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I can't see there being a downside to it, to be no. honest. Good. Um, Elden Ring has um, coming out on Thursday, I think. And it's, is it coming out tomorrow? Is it 24th tomorrow? No, maybe I've got that wrong. It's Friday, Friday. Friday. Okay. 25th, yeah. Um, Unless you li- I'm moving to uh, New Zealand so I can get it earlier. And so Paul's really looking forward to it. Um, I think William's going to look forward to it. Are you looking forward to it as well, William? Uh, we'll we'll talk more on Elden Ring at the end for sure. But oh. uh, I think uh, the gist of it is I'm probably going to end up buying the ball again. I keep playing these souls like Sam, like they're too hard. But then it's like it's reviewing so good. It's a 97 yeah. and they say yeah. it's like the freshest open world in a decade since Skyrim. Exactly. I have to try it. Yeah, it's too <laughs> yeah. technical. I mean, it has reviewed the review embargo happened today. We're we're recording on Wednesday, and it's um it's reviewing ridiculously high, isn't it? And everywhere. So, yeah, it's tempting. Now, there's an interesting thing though. The band and Namco have they've launched this competition, um, and it will reward a hundred winners with titles like a lord or a lady. And a small patch of land in Scotland, <laughs> which is that was brilliant. Some of the best marketing campaign you ever come up with. This, I think it's a, uh, I think it's great. Um, you'll still be able, you'll be able to set foot in your patch. You, uh, <laughs> you, it's you could have it as your title. It could be officially your title. You know, lady da 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 of this. Um, to enter, you just need to send an email to. Um, there's an email address if you look it up, uh, Elden Lord, and justify why you're or a person that you nominated deserves to be known as Elden Royalty. And they're going to choose the first hundred, and you have to be on projection so the age of sixteen. Blah, blah, blah. Um, who's going to Who's going to do that here, James? Do you fancy this? Um, no, but I'd love to read the emails that we get. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the reasons they'll give? <laughs> it's amazing. What a great idea. Paul, you're a bit yours. Um, this is your... Absolutely, yeah. If I could be uh, Lord Paul of the little patch of heather just outside Glasgow, it'd be awesome. I think you should do it, Paul. I think you should do it. Paul. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah everybody nominate me, yeah. including yeah. All, all three of our listeners. And <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe I'll have a uh, maybe I'll have a chance. Yeah. I think you should do it, Paul. Put it on, put your, put it out next week, tell us your letter. Maybe we can just go through your letter next week. Yeah, yeah, see if, yeah. I, see if you think I've got a chance. Yeah, let me get some notes. Excellent. Good. <laughs> um, 2K, I've got Lego Football and Racer. What's this about? Who did this? So 2K has uh, just probably want, they've stolen away the uh, Lego license from Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers no longer has exclusivity on the license. Apparently, Lego is concerned right now that, that Warner Brothers might not be around in a couple of years, which is a fair assumption. They could sell to anyone. So they are hedging their bets, and they have given 2K the exclusive license for Lego Sports. And so what they're doing is uh, Sumo Digital will be making a Lego football game and uh, football as in soccer for the North Americans listening, not NFL. Your football. And uh, they will also be making an open world racing game by Visual Concepts. Uh, who made the WWE 2K games and the Mm. NBA 2K games. 
Of course, the weird thing here is Sumo Digital, known for racers, of course, they're making the football game, and Visual Concepts, known for sports games, making the racer, because that makes a ton of sense, but <laughs> whatever, <laughs> Lego games are coming. I think, I think the football game is this year, and then uh, in time for the World Cup, and then the racer is next year. What would we want to see from a Lego football game? Hmm... Um, I I can't think. No, I don't know. I mean, Lego football sounds bonkers. I mean, I know that Lego races will work because we saw it in Forza Horizon Four, and that was great. But Lego football, I'm not convinced. If you could go in for a really hard tackle and they just fall apart, the players, right, right. Yeah, yeah, they just go really they crumble. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> Literally break the legs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the head fall off when they do a header. Yeah, all yeah, that stuff. Their head really falls silly. off when they do a header, and then you kick their head into the <laughs> goalpost, yeah. and it's a goal. Oh, do it. excellent! Yeah, yeah. I think that's bit. Right, I've changed my mind. Be very silly. Yeah, it has to if be. It's yeah. not silly. It's not worth it. No, exactly. Yeah, that does sound. That sounds fun. Um. Ah, okay, good, 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 good. Um, we're just rushing through some news. We're rushing through some news, but because James is uh, well, James, James's favourite game ever. This is the one he put all his money on. This give me the best game. <laughs> There's been some progress on Skull and Bones, James. Tell us about it. Well, apparently it's still happening. Wow. Going to the um, the CFO of Ubisoft. They've, I think they've changed what type of game it is about fifteen times now. But they've decided it's going to be a a multiplayer first game. So it's about co-op and working together online. So not not so much talk about a campaign anymore, which is a shame. Right. Yeah, I was quite interested in that side of it. Um, yeah, I think they've put 120 million into it so far. Um, God. And so I think it's a case of we spent this much money. We have to do something with it. Yeah, something's um, got to come out the other end, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, worth the wait. I think that <laughs> ship sailed. Oh, very good, James. Quality puns, quality I, puns. I think it'll leave a lot of people very cross by the end of uh, oh my god. It's about them. We've been it's working on these. We've been working on these all week. I like it. Yeah, I do on the spot. Ah, on the spot. Good. Yeah, we. I'm impressed. Ubisoft are a bit weird at the moment because, you know, they've had a few delays. They've got Skull and Bones, of course, has been going on since Dawn of Time and mm-hmm. and Beyond Good and Evil 2. Mm. Is... That's not happening. Do you think that's not going to happen? That's not going to happen. Really? They put a that's, lot... That's, I mainly say that just to upset Daz, to be fair. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> no, I, I can't see that happening. It's been going on and going on and going on for so long that... I fully expect them to come out any minute and say, you know what, guys, we're just kidding. I mean, they were pretty... They showed, you know, gameplay, didn't they, as well? There was gameplay of the ship going around the around a few planets. Yeah. God. I mean... I mean, they've been working on and off on it for 19 years, though, and it seems to just be a lot of feature creep. Like, somehow they turned what was supposed to be a cute little sequel to an... Um, a Zelda type game into this elite, dangerous, pro citizen, massive mm. world trading space game. It's, I don't know. Yeah. No, no. I, I hope it gets done, but I'm not holding my breath. Yeah. I mean, they've got lots of, there's been, there's been some problems that Ubisoft's been lots of people going through. You know, they've had to change staff a lot as well. What have they got this year? So far, because normally they've got loads of stuff. What do we know that's coming out for them this year? Uh, Avatar. Ah, that's the one. That's the big one, isn't it? Uh, Mario Rabbids. I think it was like uh, Rainbow Six came out the yeah. quarantine one. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Good. Um, we now we who's put here FIFA twenty three the last one. I'm interested in this. Who said this? God, I hope so. <laughs> I. I, I put this here, so this was just recorded while we, sorry, this was just reported while we were recording, so oh. FIFA 23 might be the last FIFA game. Uh, see, 
but uh, that comes with a caveat. That does not mean is the last EA Sports football game, uh, but supposedly, uh, according to Andrew Wilson, who is the CEO of EA, he is not happy. He was sitting back on FIFA's holding us back. It's four letters on a box. Why are we doing this? And from the sounds of it, the FIFA license might be up for grabs. Uh, this is the last year on the 10-year contract, and they might not be renewing it. So we could see FIFA games coming from uh, 2K. Maybe the Lego game is a FIFA game, too. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe Sony Santa Monica will make a, uh, hmm. make a bid yeah. for it. But yeah. this might be the last FIFA game. Now, wow. of course, that doesn't mean it's the last football game. Oh, no, here's what we do. We we see Konami get it after uh, <laughs> how great the last uh, has turned out. Uh, I want to know if there anyone, the anyone is still playing that. Is it still working? Is there anyone like That's what I want to know. Well, well, it was never working in the first place. No, it's true. Uh, it's, true. One, so. it's true. Um, gentlemen, thank you. That's um, the thing. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna just chat about what we're looking forward to next week because there's something we hinted at there, wasn't there? Paul, I'm going to go to you first of all. What are you looking forward to next week? Well, it may surprise you to learn, since I've given the same answer for the, about the last six weeks, um, that I'm looking forward to playing Elden Ring. Yes. Um, so, yeah, basically, that's it. Elden Ring drops. Um, I think the rest of my life gets put on hold. Um apart from going to work, obviously, because they're sad if I stay at home and play video games. Um, but, yeah, uh, that it's everything is just going to be all about the Elden Ring, baby. Um, and, William, you're, you're, you were, like you said at the start, you were thinking, do I do it? Do I, can I put myself through this? But you, do you feel like you're going to do it? You're going to bite the bullet, like you said? Yeah, probably. Uh, it, it's, I love how for many it's like this excitement. Oh my God, it's Elden Ring, it's coming out. And for me, it's just uh, just realization giving in to the inevitable that, yeah, I'm going to play this. It's going to be hard and, uh, and I've got a lot and I'm busy and I shouldn't do it and I shouldn't spend the money. But God, it looks so good. Like the open world. I. That is a genre in need of the next Skyrim moment, and I thought Starfield was going to deliver that. Starfield certainly can't still deliver that, but it sounds like Elden Ring delivers it too. Mm. So, yeah. yay! It's interesting because yeah. there's been—I the, mean, the reviews have been. You can go and look at other reviews. We 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 probably have Paul. Maybe have your thoughts next week as well. If it's on next week about it, but um, they're very high. It's interesting that they're saying it's not. As it's it's still punishing, but it's you know you can you can go off somewhere else and do something. And it sounds kind of intriguing to me this time. You're not you're not stuck in a kind of a linear sense, even though that you wasn't before. You know, in the Dark Souls, you could go off in different. Parts, yeah, you, you you could go off piste and in the Dark Souls games, but you normally got rewarded with a good kick in. So mm. um, yeah, yeah, it's um, it certainly looks promising. I mean, um, if it's moved on from the um when i played the network test i mean even then it felt proper it felt like a good game um you could see the bones of the dark souls but it was more than that and yeah it just looks like it's going to be one of those time sync games that you just can't stop until you beat it sort of thing great um also there's a there's a beginner's dungeon in it, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, is, there, is, yeah. That, is that where you're going to be? Is that yeah. where I'll find that's, 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 that's all I'll be <laughs> a year down the line in that beginner's dungeon. Looking, um, yeah, the beginner's dungeon that you can kind of like, like a tutorial dungeon, basically. They, they, they're doing, um, James, are you going to be playing Elden Ring? <laughs> um, I might play it in the next 10 years, <laughs> um, but not anytime soon. But I'm looking forward to hearing Paul talk about it, see if it. Might entice me. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, in the moment, no. But, what are you looking forward to next week? Apart from that, that's it. It's a terrible week. <laughs> it's waiting for Paul. Just waiting for Paul's voice. Well, you know, you know what, mate. You can ring me anytime. It's fine. It's... <laughs> I might not answer if I'm playing Elden Ring, but yeah, yeah. you can ring me. Good. 
Um, right, thank you, gentlemen. William, where can we find you if you want to chat to you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at William J. Caruana. Great. And um, Paul, where can we find you? You can also find me on the Twitter, and my handle is at Xbox Hub Paul. Good. And James, I beg you. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at OKGKO. Great. You can find me in GB Bradley on Twitter and other things. But for now, gentlemen, enjoy Olden Ring, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. You've been listening to the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. You'll be able to find all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook.